Teton budget, new to live streaming, and you need to purchase camera. The good news is you probably don't know, but you already have a camera, your phone. Or let's say you already have a streaming setup, but you want to add an extra angle, maybe a second angle or a third angle to show behind the scenes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your phone as an HDMI camera, meaning you're not going to be having any connectivity issues. Unlike some wireless options, you're going to be using a natural HDMI. And of course, we're going to be using my iPhone. Now, if you're using an Android phone, there's another way of doing that. But for this video, we're going to be focusing on using iOS devices. So let's not take much time. I'm going to be setting up the whole thing in OBS and we're gonna go live or pretend we are going live of course using my iPhone and an HDMI cable everything connected to my computer so let's go what's going on guys some of the production tips and tools here so what you really need is gonna be actually super simple the first thing you need you're gonna need an actual capture card this is gonna allow you to connect your phone to your computer in order to be able to access through OBS. Of course, we're gonna need an HDMI cable as well. This capture card cost me around 10, 15 dollars. This HDMI cable is probably 10 to 15 dollars as well. And you already have your phone and a crucial piece of gear that you're gonna need. Of course, working with iOS, it's gonna be this little device. It's called AV2 hdmi adapter this is gonna cost you around maybe 40 50 bucks and you're gonna be good to go that's pretty much it another thing that you may need i have this little clamp this is gonna allow me to mount my phone to anything could be a light stand a tripod that you already have again this is gonna depend on what you need the phone for if this is gonna be your main camera or your main angle you may need to invest in a little like something like a light stand or something that is going to allow you to position it in front of you all right so another little accessory that you're gonna need of course something to clamp your phone on or some sort of holder this is going to be important. Again, just go to Amazon. If you shop from Amazon or any other store, just like find something that can actually be used to clamp your phone on and that should do the job. All right. Now for the software, the first thing we're going to look into is going to be the actual software on the phone or the app that's going to allow us to have what's called a clean HDMI. So the first app that's going to allow you to have what's called a clean HDMI, it's called Camera Vision. Now, at the time that I record this video, this app is actually not free, but you can get it for only 99 cents, which is really, in my opinion, is really cheap. I already have mine installed, but you need to go to your app store just look for camera vision just install it so connecting is gonna be super easy what you need to do is connect this little device into your phone and this part here this is where you're gonna connect your hdmi cable take one end of the hdmi cable is going to connect into the adapter right here like so our capture card here what it's gonna do is we're gonna take the other end of our hdmi cable is going to connect into the capture card just like so and now this usb part this is what's going to be going into our computer so let's go ahead and connect everything to the computer and let's see what we get Another thing is if you have something like the ATEM Mini or any other switcher that can take HDMI, you're probably not going to need a capture card because you can connect directly from the phone's adapter into the HDMI cable and the HDMI cable can actually connect directly into your ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini or any other HDMI switcher without any problem. All right, guys, so now I have everything connected right now. I've got my phone mounted in front of me right now. And of course, it's going through this HDMI adapter into the HDMI cable, then into the capture card, into my computer. We've got OBS open right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you actually get to add it. Now, I have this scene that I created before just to test it before I actually show you guys how it works. But I'm going to go ahead and actually create another scene. I'm going to call it phone and then I'm going to hit OK, of course. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and add a new source and this is gonna be a video capture device and then for this one we're gonna call it iphone 2 and then i'm gonna hit ok as you can see i have a lot of choices here and then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go and choose usb video and as you can see the video is showing up no problem and of course it doesn't look super well because i'm using my front camera for resolution type i can of course go to custom and then we can go ahead and actually choose 1920 by 1080p which is the resolution that i'm actually getting from the actual camera with the app you can go ahead and choose between 720p 1080p or SD like standard but in my opinion you want to get the highest which is going to be 1920 by 1080p or full HD now if I go to 720p as you can see this is what it looks like and I can go ahead and actually do full HD and this is what it looks like and in my opinion that's the one you should be using right now everything else fps we can match 30 frames per second that's okay usually that's what i use so i can go ahead and actually choose 30 frames per second video format we can go ahead and just hit any color space just leave it default and everything else you shouldn't really be playing with it just hit okay and we are good to go so as you can see now i have my video in obs again if i was to stream with this phone i'll probably uh, be talking like this kind of facing it that's how you would do your live streaming or whatever you may be doing which is awesome next up we're gonna go ahead and add some audio now with this app you can actually get some audio going through there's something that says mic that's gonna allow some audio to come through so let's go ahead and actually test it and see if it's possible to get some audio from your iphone so we can go ahead and actually hit the plus sign and then we can use audio input capture this is in case you need audio if you have a microphone like the one that i'm using you can go ahead and actually use that microphone right so in that case it's a microphone and then we're gonna go where it says device so instead of using the default my main audio device is actually the video call l plus r which is my focus right interface all right so if i wanted to add that microphone i'll go ahead and actually choose this one and if I wanted to add the microphone from the iPhone, I'm gonna go ahead and actually use this one right here, which should be USB audio. So it should be this one, digital audio interface, USB digital audio, all right? This is the one coming from the capture card. And of course it's coming from my phone. This usually, it should be this microphone right here. So now when I tap on it, you can see that you actually were getting a signal from the phone which is amazing that's how you would actually get the sound from your iphone now i don't recommend using this kind of sound personally i would recommend you know you kind of get a microphone like this one like the one that i'm using or any other kind of usb microphone that would be kind of separate from your iphone's audio because if you're using the camera from the iphone and using the microphone from the iphone then why not just go live on your iphone instead of using obs for most people I would say you just use the camera from the iPhone and maybe have another camera, second camera. Even if it's your main camera, try to get another mic you can just clip on your shirt or any other USB microphone that can be, you can have on your desk. And that would be the microphone that you would be using. So let's go ahead and actually mute it because we don't need it. So the last thing you need to do, of course, if you're going live on Facebook, just going to make sure you go to settings and set up your live stream to Facebook. If you're going live on YouTube, you're going to do the same thing. And of course, if you have your ATM mini or any other switcher, you're going to be going live, maybe using your physical switcher, just sending the HMI signal from your phone and that should do the job. So a little bit about the app, guys. This is what the app looks like. So as you can see, if you tap to this button here, it's going to give you the image source kind of tab. So you can choose from photo albums. If you want to show a picture or one of your picture on the stream, boom, and it's going to show just like that, which is awesome. And now, if you want to show something else, I can go tap to the same icon, go to rear camera. So I can go back to the rear camera. If I want to change to the front camera as well, 
do something like this if i want to go ahead and actually let's go to rear camera any camera you may be using you can go ahead and actually change resolution from a, a standard to 720p or full hd in my opinion full hd is gonna be the best you can rotate something like that you can rotate the image as you can see you got a lot of settings here you can use the flash from the phone so you're gonna have some lighting from the phone you can do go ahead and actually activate the the flash you have this pause button that i believe is gonna pause whatever is on the screen which is an amazing feature and of course you got this info button where you can actually display some info whatever is on screen actually the resolution and everything that you may be using so we can go ahead and actually change the settings to whatever fits so we can remove the info and of course we got the mic to activate the mic now if you want something else there's another app called filmic pro now filmic pro the reason why if this app works for you i wouldn't recommend it is because it comes with the pricing where you actually have to pay monthly it's gonna be more useful not just for streaming but for live streaming of course it's gonna give you the option to have to or to turn on the 4k option full hd and at the same time to have what's called clean hdmi another thing that filmic pro that has this app doesn't have is the ability to change your white balance because with this app it looks like you kind of stuck with the white balance or the phone is going to kind of detect whatever the environment and try to set the white balance automatically at least for now i don't see it and that could be maybe something that would request for them to kind of change to be able to set your own white balance because that will help to kind of match the rest of the cameras in your studio or to match your key light in your studio using wireless could be actually an option and if you want to see how i'm actually to do that using another free app called iRyan be able to add your phone wirelessly to your obs live streaming and be able to use it to go live i'm gonna make a video and it's gonna be linked right here so make sure you check it out and i will see you guys there